lovely people of the internet. Welcome to Pages and Pages. Today I wanted to do a discussion video with you about how I avoid buying books. Do you have that problem? I understand the temptation. This is how I avoid buying books. First thing to do to avoid buying books is to not buy a book until you've already read it. This helps me to ensure that I'm buying books that I love and not books that I only think are okay. So I, that way I don't have a shelf full of three-star books, I can have a shelf full of five-star books. How do you read it if you don't buy it, Paige? Come on! Well, there's lots of other resources available to you, starting with your public library, who would be glad of the support, I'm sure. Sometimes that process is kind of a treasure hunt, so it's actually more fun to try to find a book that you want to read at your library, at a friend's house, uh, instead of just going to the nearest bookstore and picking it up. This isn't a diss against bookstores. Bookstores are lovely, and I think that they're beautiful and necessary, and especially second-hand bookstores, I think, are just marvelous. What this is, is an effort to buy fewer books and to buy books that I will enjoy more. So that's the first thing, is to just not buy a book until you've already read it. I know that's hard. Uh, sometimes I don't even follow that rule. There's always the odd exception. Uh, secondly, once you've read the book and you're like, hmm, that was pretty good, think about whether or not you're going to reread a book. I am a firm believer in rereading books, and so I want to purchase those books that I have the intention to reread. That way, when I go through and read it again, I can make notes and kind of note the differences between each of my rereads, and that kind of helps me learn how I've grown as a person since my last reread. I want to be able to keep track of my thoughts about that book by keeping it on my shelf, by writing in it, by having it kind of document my uh, love affair with this book, if you will. Usually when I'm borrowing a book from the library or from a friend, I can't write in it, so if I buy it then I get that privilege of being able to write in it. Sometimes it's really hard to avoid buying books because they are so beautiful. An example of this that I have actually with me right now is uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I'm sure you've all seen this book, but let me just show you again. This copy of this book is the most beautiful edition I've ever seen. I love the illustrations. This is the kind of book that I might actually end up buying down the road, but for the time being, I was able to check this out from my library so I could really enjoy the pictures and go through it, but I don't have to make the investment and purchase it right now. Who knows, maybe it'll be a set one day, and then I'll be able to buy the whole set rather than just buying each book individually, and then I'll be able to have a matching set. So sometimes procrastinating on buying a book helps me to obtain a cleaner, prettier edition, which is something that I'm sure you all appreciate. <laughs> I think of it this way. A book that's not being read is not fulfilling its function in life, and I just want all of the books to be read and loved. I want to use the books that I have purchased, and I want them to feel loved, and I can't love all of the books if I have too many. What, what my method essentially leads to is me rebuying the same books in multiple copies. So, like for example, The Count of Monte Cristo, I have two editions of that. I have two different editions of The Divine Comedy, repeats of a lot of Jules Verne and Jane Austen. Because I love those books, and when I see a prettier edition of that same book, I'm like, ooh, hello, old friend, in a beautiful new cover. So you see that with like, like Pascal, especially, because this is the copy that I bought for school because it was cheap and it was the edition that had the same page numbers that everybody else in the class was using, but then I saw this one at a bookstore and I had to have it because I've read I've read it before in here and I can tear this one up and write my notes in this one, but this one is just so pretty and it has an introduction by T.S. Eliot, so I was like, yes, please, I need this. It's so beautiful. There's also some books that I will always buy a copy of if I find it. The only example coming to mind at the moment is the Four Loves by C.S. Lewis. It's a really excellent book and I feel like a lot of people need to read it and understand it and it's really short and little and so whenever I see a copy of it I just pick it up because I know that I'm going to be giving it as a gift at some point in the future. And of course there are exceptions. Usually at used bookstores I will find maybe I try to only pick up maybe one book each time I go to the bookstore. The exception I'll make to the only if I've ever read it rule is if 
it is a classic that is really well acclaimed and is something that a lot of people feel like a lot of people need to read. A recent example of that is um, back in maybe November I picked up Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman because that is a name that I've heard a lot before. But it's a classic thing that a lot of people have talked about and that I feel like is an important thing to read. Not just any silly story, you know, I'm gonna find something that has some meat on its bones. So those are some of the ways that I buy books, some of my thoughts about buying books, and I hope this helped you. Obviously everybody is different and has different ideas about why to buy books and about what books they like buying, um, and it is a very personal preference. So if you have other thoughts than these, like, I would love to hear why, like, what makes you unable to resist. Um, my personal weakness is stationery. I cannot stop myself from buying some good stationery and I can't really explain that. I just need more stationery. I love envelopes, I love cards, it's beautiful. If you know how to avoid stationery, please um, let me know. What are some of the ways you try to stop yourself from buying books? I'm curious what methods are out there. Anyways, I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you next time. Goodbye, lovelies.